started. Uh, Jimmy brought me these glasses. Uh, said they was under the shelf down there. If these are yours, if they're not, I'll take $5 for them. Uh, now, nah, honestly, they'll be right here if somebody's lost a pair of uh, sunglasses. I don't know if they're, I don't know what they are. If they're yours, they're here. If they're not, maybe somebody else could. But anyway, all right. We'll open up a prayer. We'll pray for uh, Pastor Steve and Miss Penny. They have, uh, I think they went to Florida. Uh, they're on a family vacation. They'll, I guess, come back today. I'm not sure 100% on that. But tonight we're having a singing, so you just uh, plan on being here for that. Mercy as well be with us. And uh, so you let's pray the Lord keep them safe. And then just uh, pray the Lord have his way. Good to see you. Good, uh, good to be here. Uh, so I'm excited. Anyway, I'm just going to open up prayer. And let's go ahead and get started. And uh, so I invite you to come to the if you want to as we open up in prayer. Grace 
there. I'll fly away. He said, when he toots, we're going to scoot. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate you. That's really good good singing, good music there. We're, let me tell you what's going on tonight. Mercy Well will be here. So at uh, 6 o'clock, you plan on being back here tonight for a time of uh, uh, worship there with the singing group. And let's see, the, tomorrow night, the visitation will still be doing the uh, outreach, holding the signs. And, uh, and if you'd like to come out and be a part of that, and you say, I'd like to, but I'm a little bit scared, well, come stay with me, because I am too. Okay, so, uh, uh, but it's, it's just encouraging more folks. There's actually more churches getting involved, and it's a blessing. So if we're going to make a difference, it's going to be because more than just a couple of people are going to do that. So just come on out. Get involved there uh, with the summer visitation. The uh, men's ministry, Thursday nights. Men all living plan on being here at 7 o'clock. You say, I don't usually to come to a men's meeting. You need to be here Thursday night. I Amen. promise you. Mike Warren is uh, going to be with us. Mike is just, uh, he's one of the best. He's not just the best preacher. I mean, just a man of God. He's the real deal. But he will be here, so you tell some folks to come uh, bring him with you. And uh, I've talked to our cook, old Mike DePulliam, and we're going to have hamburger steaks again Amen. and mashed potatoes. So glory to God. I'm excited about it. Try to get on a few pounds, big day. You come? All right. I'll see you here. So, man, you play them in here at 7 o'clock, all right? And the sign-up sheet is out there for Fort Castle. Man, we want you to go. Uh, so you, there's, just put your name on the side, side somewhere. We have room for 100. We've uh, reserved, uh, reserved the rooms there or the houses to, uh, to sleep, 100 men to sleep. So if you want to go, put your name on there. And men, if you are able to give money towards that, is asking $100 a man. Uh, you can bring that to me, Pastor Steve, or, or Steve Jacobs there at the men's group. <coughs> but if you can't afford it, we still want you to go. And uh, it's uh, So you just put your name on that yellow paper out there. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, graduate rest recognition is coming up. Anything you need to announce right off? All right. Well, if not, let's worship the Lord with our giving. Church. And God, I pray you just bless this offering. You can bless your kingdom. Lord, you be honored and glorified through it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm 
traveled on this journey. I've never seen a storm like this before. I keep listening for the thunder. While the clouds hovering over take their form, I know that you will guide me. So do your nail scarred hands, Lord, I will clean. And though I may not want this trial, I know that it will be. Until the storm is over, I need you, Lord, to come and help me stand. For I've always been just fine, and I've held on to your strong and mighty hand. But I know this is your will.
the schedule. And I thought, well, glory, I'll be there. He says, you want to get somebody else? I said, no. God hadn't let me down yet. So I went to read, <coughs> praying, asked the Lord to help me. And uh, I'd read, I was telling Mark, I'd read through uh, First and Second Peter, nothing. I said, well, I'll just read through the book of Philippians. And uh, it wasn't about the third chapter. I knew the Lord showed me this. And I thought, Lord, I can't preach that. And he says, just go ahead. I tell Audrey, told Audrey what I'm going to preach. She laughed at me. And uh, I said, well, you dog, you sorry dog, you should have talked to me that way. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, Philippians chapter 3. Uh, if you find your place there. And uh, this, I just told Dee, I said, Dee, if, it, if, if, if the same uh, Holy Spirit will meet with us for the next few minutes like he did about an hour and a half ago, we're going to be all right. So uh, that's how I'm simply trusting the Lord. I don't have much to tell you. Just trying to help you be encouraged. You all right? So Philippians chapter 3. Uh, I, you don't have to stand. I, I told the uh, early service the, uh, uh, the, I'll, do, I'll stand for the green today. Uh, so anyway, Philippians chapter 3. Everybody there say amen. 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 Do not go to sleep on me. If you do, I will throw this remote control and uh, get you up. But I, I'm this big. So anyway, you're not going to sleep. It's, uh, we had a good time at the early service. So. Philippians chapter 3, in verse 1, it says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write these same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of uh, concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Heavenly Father, I thank you again <clears throat> for this time for allowing me to preach. And Lord, I pray that you anoint me with your Holy Spirit. God, you fill this place. And Lord, I pray for the one that's here that is uh, discouraged. God, I pray you lift them up here in the next few minutes. God, just... Show us the error of our ways when we're wrong. And Lord, just to, uh, to help us to overcome uh, Satan. And, and Lord, to realize when Satan has put people and things in our lives to, uh, to rob us, to discourage us. So Lord, trust you to help the church here for a minute. God, you have your way. We love you in Jesus' name. All right, now I'm going to try and preach pretty quick here. I, I always tell you that I'm not going to preach long, but also me and Audrey's got to go marry some folks or I've got to uh, do the wedding here in just a few. So uh, anyway, but I'm just going to trust the Lord here. All right, so Philippians chapter 3. Uh, this is the church at Philippi. This was the first uh, Christian church in Europe. It, and, and, and Paul had wrote the book of Philippians. This is the, the, like I said, this was the first Christian church that was established in Europe and in the church of Philippi. And it, I, in reading this, it reminds me of Hope Baptist Church. It, it is a good church. I, I mean, it, it reminds me of, of the people here. And I encourage you to simply read it and see if God don't show you the same thing. You can, you can read it all in just a few minutes probably. Uh, but anyway, if you say, I can't read, get you a phone, just put play. And that old Alex Scorpio, if you can stand his voice, he'll read it out to you. So, uh, But anyway, I encourage you to listen to it and tell me that it don't remind you of, of Hope Baptist Church. And so I praise the Lord for that. And you read about uh, the Philippian church, you'll see that there was very minor problems that, that came along uh, in this church. In, in, in chapter 4, you'll see there was a little bit of disunity, but uh, they, they quickly got through them and, and, and went on. And here's another thing. And men, you can get mad if you want to, but the women played a major role in the establishment of, of the Philippian church, the, the church at Philippi. The women done a lot of the work there. The women helped build that church and start that church. Now I know the uh, the man's role is, is in leadership and what God's uh, called men to do. And uh, But I'm going to tell you, there's a bunch of sorry men. If people want to run down to churches for having women doing this, women doing that, well, where's the blessed men at? They're sorry. They're no good. And so the women are having to do that because they have heart. Now, I hope that is, we don't have much sorry men. We just got a lot of good women. And so I praise the Lord for that. We've got one or two sorry men, and I'll call them out here in a minute. But anyway, uh, but women play a, a major part, a major role in the uh, church at Philippi. So praise the Lord for you women. I told them earlier, I said, I'm going to set my wife right here because I was getting some mean looks in that early service. And I thought, let's go all sit right here and she look at me. She'd probably get mad at me too. And then she'd come in with that pink dress. And I, I can't sit you right there. But anyway, here, here's what I did. <laughs> Praise the Lord for the women, all right? But Paul wrote this letter to the church at Philippi from a, church, uh, from a prison in Rome. He was, under, he was in prison in Rome, and he wrote this letter to the church of uh, Philippi. He sends this letter back to the, the church of, 
uh, uh, Philippi had sent an elder by the name of um, uh, Euphrates who uh, they had sent him to encourage Paul while he was in uh, prison. While he was coming, you, you'll read this, you'll see that he falls sick. It says almost to death. They thought he died and then and Paul says, I, I sent him back to you and, 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 and he sends or Euphrates back and he wanted to thank the church of Philippi for giving to his ministry. And I'm going to tell you through reading this, it really showed me hope. Uh, it showed me hope, Baptist. But he, he wanted to thank them because that church was faithful to give. They was faithful to encourage. They was faithful to love. He sends a letter uh, back to them through this man and he simply wanted to thank them. He wanted them to know how to keep their joy, how to keep their contentment. He said, I know you're a good church but uh, and, and I, I thank you for giving but I, he gets to chapter 3 here and he says, look, he says, I want to thank you but I also want you to know you're going to have to guard your joy. You're going to have to guard what it is that keeps you uh, uh, content. He wanted them to, to warn them about Judaizers that was coming, that these false teachers that uh, that they was coming and that they was going to try and take their joy. And, and, and so here's where it goes. And i got to move on. In chapter 3, and, and here's where he starts off. In verse 2 there, he says, uh, in verse 1, he says, Finally, my brethren. Uh, he says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. That word finally, you know what it means. He's simply saying, this is the last thing I want to tell you, church, at Philippi. You see, he's in prison. He knows he's going to be killed. Uh, what, what the future's are holding for him because the stand he takes. But he says, finally, I've got to tell you this. He says, my brethren. He's not talking to the world here. He's talking to the church. And simply, if you're lost, I'm, I'm not talking to you today. I'm trying to encourage the church. If you're lost, you're going to die and go to hell. It's that simple, all right? You get mad at me if you want to, I don't care. But I'm trying to tell you, think you're going to make it without the blood of Jesus? You're not. You're going to end up in a devil's hell. But today, church, I want to encourage the church because too many of us are hanging our heads. We've lost our joy. We're discouraged. We're defeated. Paul said, finally, Christian men and women, rejoice in the Lord. Here's what he said. Rejoice in your salvation. He said, you're going to have to guard your joy. Your joy. I said earlier, why is the most miserable person people in the world Christian people? I mean, I'm just being honest with you. I praise the Lord for our church. But it, some of the most miserable people I've ever met in my life were born again to have children of God. And why is that? Don't want nobody wants to be around them. They're miserable. All they do is talk bad about people, put down people, bad attitude. Everything's going wrong. The wheels fell off. This, that, dumped it up and sat on the wall. Look, he, he, here's what I'm telling you. Why is that? We don't have no joy. Amen. Paul tells them right here, he says, beware of dogs. Look, he, he said, he reminds them to rejoice because it is safe. i got to give you this. He said, I wanted to write this letter to you. For me, it's not grievous, but for you, it's safe. He said, I don't mind telling you, church. I don't mind telling you at all. I appreciate you. I don't mind telling you that. I love you. Thank you for giving to the ministry. He said, but it's safe for you. It's a safe place that I should tell you, if you'll keep that joy, it'll be safe for you. I mean, it's a good place. And he, he reminds them it's safe uh, because it's safe. Paul reminds them to keep their joy because it's safe. You see, joy is the one of the vital gauges on the dashboard of a Christian life. You see, when the, uh, when the needle dips, when you lose your joy, you should take note. It's one of the vital gauges. Our joy is like this. And it seems like we run up and down, up and down, up and down. I do. And, and, <laughs> anyway, to stay safe, you need to pay attention to your joy. You need to make sure that gauge is staying up, up. And it'll start to dip and say, oh, something's wrong. You let your car, you let your temperature gauge get down up too hot on that, on that temperature gauge. And you keep driving. Do you know what's going to happen? You better have trip away. Because you're fixed, something's fixing to break. Something's fixing to leave. And so here, here's what I'm telling you. He says, uh, the, the, to stay safe, you need to pay attention to your joy. Church, this is what I'm trying to help you with here. We, we need to pay attention to our joy. You get to where it ain't fun no more, I'm not happy no more, your gauge is down. Amen. Something's happened. Something's running wrong. You need to fix it. Your temperature hand gets too hot on the car, I told you, that thing's fixing to blow if you keep driving. You better take it and get it fixed. And I read a story a couple days ago about these coal miners. In 2006, in Saga, uh, the Saga Mine disaster where 12 men were killed in the, in the coal mine. 
And then I, I found one where in 1906, almost 1,100 miners were killed at one time by a massive chain of explosions. You know why? There was too much gas in there with them. And so they developed, Jerry, that, 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 that uh, they found a way to, they weren't gas gauges and this and that. They didn't know how that gas was getting so dangerous. But they, they, they realized that there was a, it, it's called a canary, a little yellow bird. They discovered that they could take this yellow bird and put him in a cage in that coal mine. And as long as the gases were safe, that little bird would always sing. He would always chirp. He would always fly around. He would always make a noise. He would get up on his perch and sing. And whenever the coal miners noticed that, that that little yellow bird would get to where it wasn't making no noise, they realized it's not safe in here no more. And they knew it was time to get fresh air. And church, this is how we are. It, 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 our Christian joy is like that singing yellow bird. When your heart stops singing, you better take notice something's going on. Something has happened to your joy. It's, it's, it's the warning light. It, it's the warning to watch your life. What has came in? What has happened? What has caused uh, 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 this to happen to me? The little canary has stopped singing in a lot of lives, church. And, and here's what I'm telling the lights going off. If your soul is satisfied, as is satisfied in Jesus Christ, you're going to rejoice in Christ. You take your eyes off of God, you're going to lose your joy. Amen. Jesus says, it's my joy. And ain't that something? God, give, let me give you a Bible, John 15. He says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So here's what I'm trying to help you, church. Here's, here's what Jesus said. He said, if you do these things, you keep my commandment, my joy, the joy of God, will remain in us. So why? That our joy can be full. We don't have to hang our heads. Uh, uh, look, joy is the emotion of salvation. It, it is the joy of seeing, knowing, love, and trusting God. Joy shouldn't be taken by the circumstances of life. It shouldn't be, but we let it. I'm, I got to move on. It, it, it's God-given joy, greater and stronger than the trouble that comes into our lives. Amen. That joy should be greater than the trouble that comes. Amen. But so many times we don't let that happen. We let anything come and take our joy. We're not happy no more. <sighs> I, I was talking to somebody out there a while ago, and I shouldn't say this, but I am. Because some of you said it. You may be feeling it now. You said, I'm never going back there again. That person. I'm never going back there again. I said, I told somebody out there, well, go. I said, 17, 18 years. I don't know how long we've been coming here. It seems like it's flew by. I said, I've said that 50 times. <laughs> Why? Why would I say that? Because somebody had took my joy. And so here's what Habakkuk 3 says. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olives shall fail, the field shall fail, fail no meat, flocks shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk says, I don't care it, what it produces, what it brings, I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. You know why? Because Jesus, God gave me this joy. Man didn't give it to you, but Satan Amen. sure sent some men in to try to take it from you. And a Christian with no joy is a miserable person. Amen. It's a defeated person. It's a discouraged person. And Satan will send people your way to try to steal your joy. John 16, 20. It says, And you now therefore have sorrow, but I see you, I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy no man take from you. And why is it that we let somebody take our joy? I'm trying to help you. Why is it somebody take our shout, our song, our praise? Somebody that God gave us. We allow it. And, and, and here's what here's what here's what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, in verse 2. He says, Beware of dogs. I mean, beware of dogs. Beware, beware of evil workers. Beware of concision. That word concision means mutilator. It, it, it means that, uh, look, here, here's what I'm telling you. Beware. It's a warning. Paul said, I'm warning you. Beware. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. There's what he tells us. Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you. And to me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you it's safe. He says, beware of dogs. It means to look out for it, it means to, to guard yourself. It means to be vigilant. So here's what I'm going to do for just a minute. I told Audrey, 
go get me this sign. I'm going to preach on beware of the dog. Now, if you laugh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I laughed too. I told her that. I said, I don't care. Just get me the sign. Beware of the dog. Now, 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 here, here's what I love. I love dogs. We have 15. I told them, I basically said again a minute. Between me and Mark over there, we've got more dogs than Blessed Shelter does. We love, I love dogs. I love hunting dogs. I, and my kids love dogs anyway. So it, it's easy for me to preach about a dog or have an illustration about a dog. I can tell stories all day about dogs. Dog, 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 dog. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Paul said, you better beware of dogs. Dogs in, the, in, in, in Bible days were not like dogs today. Dogs, in, in this day, it wasn't like dogs that they are today. Today, a dog has more rights than a human being. In this day, it was the lowest form of life there was. So in our, today, you can kill all the babies you want, but you better not dare touch a dog. Now, I'm just being honest with you. We have got this thing so, so corrupt. I, I mean, we're worshiping the, uh, the creature more than the creator. And, and here's what I'm telling you. You can have abortion. That's the biggest thing going in uh, society today. Roe versus Wade and all this and that. And, and the, 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 the most political parties, it's either you stand with abortion or you don't. And I'm not getting into that either. But i, I got to say this in case I never get to preach. How in the world... I better not. Let me, let me tell you. <laughs> How can you... Murder a baby. How, I don't care. I don't care. But they should do away with Democrat and Republican. I'm sick of hearing all this. It's either right or wrong. Amen. Amen. And how could you ever say that's okay with me? Yeah. They're going to kill babies up to, to birth, Daryl. I mean, you kill that baby after it's born. But bless God, let them catch you not feed that dog today. You go to prison for years if you get caught hurting a dog, but yet you can kill and murder all the babies you want. And I'm going to tell you, there's something wrong. Amen. And i got to stick to my stuff. But evidently, half the church is voting this mess in. Now, I'm just telling you, I'm just, i I got to keep this. He said, beware of dogs. Bless God. Beware of the dogs. Look here, here. Here's what I'm telling you. Dogs were not domestic animals in this day. They were scavengers. They were wild. They were, uh, dogs in the Bible was a word to put down somebody. It was a, a reference to evil. It was something degrading. Jews called Gentiles dogs. And this was the first time right here that a, a, a Gentile had, had ever called a Jew a dog. Word being referred to as a dog. But and So here's what I'm telling you. 41 times the word dog or dogs is mentioned in the Bible. It's always in reference to somebody that's belittled, somebody that's evil, somebody that's uh, sorry, no good for nothing. Every time except for one time, Job had a guard dog. Hopefully we'll get to that. I didn't get to in the early uh, service. But he's not making reference to a four-legged animal here. He's not saying, y'all watch out for Rover or, or you watch out for old Fido. He's not saying that. What Paul's saying, you watch out for that sorry, no good for nothing dog that Satan's trying to put in your life. You beware of that dog. And here, here i got to give you this. I'm not saying there's dogs in here. I'm not saying none of y'all. I don't, I don't know. But I'm trying to tell you, you better not think for one minute that Satan won't try and put one of these dogs <coughs> and sit right up next to you. You know why? He's trying to steal your joy. You see, this is what Paul was dealing with. He was telling you, you've got joy. Uh, bless God, you know how to give. You know how to praise the Lord. You know how to support the ministry. I mean, you know what it's like to, for nothing else to matter but Jesus Christ. But you better be wearing them dogs. Amen. <laughs> I'm not saying any of you are dogs. I praise the Lord for you. I couldn't imagine going to church nowhere else. Never, ever, ever. We've talked about, I said maybe one day we'll get to move to beach. No way. I couldn't be in another church. I couldn't imagine life without Hope Baptist Church. I, I'm just telling you. But here's what I'm telling you. Don't think for, you, you, don't think for one, one minute that Satan won't try and get under somebody and become one of these dogs. Amen. And I want to try and help you recognize a dog whenever you see one. You see, we look at that dog. I mean, Mark, I tell you, that's, that's plot him. That's a, that's a red bone. That's a, uh, uh, I'm going on. We can recognize them dogs. But I'm, I'm going to help you help recognize these dogs whenever you see one. You see that word beware. It means to be warned. He, he said, I warn you. You beware to protect your joy and your contentment. These beware of dog signs. They're there to warn you. They're, they're, we see these beware of dog signs. They're to let you know that danger could be near. They're to let you know they're always around something inside. 
I've never had a B word dog sign since we was uh, kids, but we got us one now, baby. They better know don't come around my house because we got dogs. <laughs> I mean, my kids, both of them are two different kinds of dogs I'll share with you in a minute, but here's what I'm telling you. You be worried the dogs. You see, why don't you ever see that sign on the street somewhere? Because they're not dogs. We put up, we get these dogs to guard our stuff. What's valuable? Paul said, beware of dogs. Look, look, look. That sign is saying there's something there that could bite you. It could, Paul said, beware of dogs. So I, I, here's what I'm saying. That sign is put up to say something is around there, around that valuable stuff to bite you, to probably devour you. It may even kill you. Amen. And here, here, look, people that have lap dogs, some of y'all have them. We've inherited a month lap dog. There's never been a dog on our bed. And she's allowed this mutt to lay up on the edge of our bed. And I, so I let my mutt get up there just to make her mutt mad. And she said, get the dog off the bed. And I said, well, that blessed dog don't have no business up here. And then, anyhow, but here's what I'm going to tell you. People that have these little Yorkies and poodles and things, they don't have these beware signs. You see, it's that one that's going to devour you. And so here, 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 here's, here, look, here's what I'm telling you about dogs. Beware of the dogs. Let me tell you about dogs. Dogs, they run in packs. You can't trust a dog. They, they'll sneak up on you. They're backbiters. They, you, they'll say one thing to your face and another thing behind your back. Proverbs 11, 9, just in case, it says, And a hypocrite, it don't say just in case, that was me. I want you to listen to this. A proverb, and a hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But their knowledge shall the just be delivered. You see that you can't trust the dog. They'll eat, they'll eat their own ways. You say, oh, you're sick. I don't care if you want a dog. They're nasty. No good for nothing. Can't look up there and I don't know. Look at her in the face. And I say, Kate, I just watched the blessed dog eat his own mess. I've seen him make his career in. And you won't let that dog lick you in the face. They're nasty. I'm going to tell you, a dog will eat their own waste. And, and here's what I'm telling you. The Bible says in Proverbs 26, 11, says, A dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. This is a picture of a backslider. He keeps falling over and over and over and over and over again. You know why? Because he's like a dog. He returned, he's eating his vomit, he's eating his waste. He, he's a dog. And now, they bark for no reason. They love to roll in dead things. You say, oh, you're crazy. You better get rid of that little poodle dog and realize, or let, you let that little old foo-foo that sits on your lap go outside, run through where there's a dead possum or something, lay it on the side of the road. First thing he'll do is get on his back and start rolling like this. He'll come lick, he'll jump up on your lap, lick you in the mouth, and he say, oh, you stink. Yeah, you know why? Because he's a dog. <laughs> They bark for no reason. They love dead things. First Kings, uh, I got to hurry, 21. You'll see where it says, Moreover, Jezebel, the dogs, came and licked her blood. You know why? She was dead. It's what dogs do. They like dead things. They love to destroy valuable things. We've got a, uh, we've got a lab. His name's Bubba. I brought Bubba around. You know, some of you seen him. He's my buddy. Audrey hates him. He's a stupid dog to Audrey. But yet her dog's stupid. But Bubba's not stupid. He's not, he's very, she'll say, that's the stupidest dog. That's the dog, that dog can open doors, he can flush toilets, he can get you a drink, he can get you a map. This dog is amazing. So I don't have a stupid dog. But here, here's what I'm going to tell you what Bubba does. He gave a FaceTime me about a year ago. He said, Dad, you're going to kill him. I said, what? what? He FaceTimed me and he's sitting there and the living room is destroyed. And I said, what is that? He said, that's your Bible. And I thought, oh, God. I said, okay. So guess what happened? When I got home, I laid hands on Bubba in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and we absolutely beat the devil out of that dog. We got him saved right there, converted him over. <laughs> and so here, here's what I'm telling you. They love, a dog loves to destroy things. They can't be trusted. And how many stories have you ever heard of, of me and Mark had just talked to a guy, raised this bulldog for 10 years, and yet it devoured him. It about killed him, tore his arm all pieces. And you can't trust a dog. I mean, that, how many stories have you ever heard that, that dog turned on me that I've raised? And I've told our kids, we've got a big old dog. I'll share with them in a minute. But I'm going to give you a couple different types of dogs. I've got to hurry. We've got to marry these folks. I'll, look, if we get to run late, you tell me. They wait on you over there to do this wedding. <laughs> but the first type of dog is a pack dog, a pack of dogs. I mean, in my mind, I'm picturing a hyena here. This is uh, their spot. These hyenas, y'all know what hyenas look like. I'm glad they're not here. But, but, but here, they're spotted. They have big teeth. They sneak around. They make a lot of noise. Y'all have seen them on National Geographic. 
And then here they'll come. They're everywhere. They're packs of dogs. And the Bible says here in, in, in Psalms 22, this is David. He says, the, for dogs have compassed me. Dogs have surrounded me is what he's saying. He says, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. David said, God, I don't know what's happened, but these sorry dogs have surrounded me. There's hyenas all around me. That word assembly means there's more than one. They surround their prey is what a pack dog does. That most of the time when you see a hyena, guess what's around him? Another hyena. It's a church. <laughs> I ain't trying to be mean. But bless God, God's helped me this week with this. When you see one hyena, they'll always be around another. And, and their sole purpose is to devour you. They don't care about your well-being. They don't care about your feelings. They just want to destroy you. And usually when you see one, they're going to be around another one. And you ever seen somebody turn against somebody because of what somebody else said? I mean, have you ever seen that where all of a sudden they turned against them? Amen. And God tell me, you know what they've done? Some hyenas come around and just trying to build a pack. They had no purpose. Just trying to fit in a pack somewhere. This is a pack dog. Anytime somebody comes to you trying to put down a brother or a sister, you better believe they're spotted like a hyena. Now, I'm going to preach now. You can run me off if you want to. You voted me in this mess. Here, here's what I'm telling you. Anytime somebody comes up to you trying to put down that brother or sister behind everybody's back, that's a blessed hyena. Amen. And let me tell you this. Anytime somebody feels comfortable coming to you, putting down that brother or sister, they probably noticed the spot on you. Matthew 7, 15 says this, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Amen. And I tried my best to get the Greek word for wolf and dog and say the same thing. Again. But here's what I'm telling you, what he's saying. He said, you beware. Beware of these false prophets. You beware of dogs. But they may look like one of us, but they're not, up. they're not like us. You see, they look like us. But they're not like us. Their only purpose is to seek and destroy what God is building. And so don't think, don't you think for one minute that God won't send one of these hyenas in to get real close to you. It's somebody that Satan, they look like us. They act like us. But it's just a false prophet. It's just a wolf. And Satan himself is sent in your life to try to destroy you. Why? To get your joy. Oh yeah. And if there's somebody that you used to be close to, now they keep a distance from you, no reason at all, you don't understand it, but all of a sudden that relationship is not the same, you better thank God that God exposed the hyena in your life. You say, I don't understand why she treat me like that. Why are they doing that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got that mess out of my life where they destroyed me. It's a pack of dogs. Uh, Luke 6, 28. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. The Bible says to pray for them. Here's what I'm telling you. You still love them, but you beware of the dogs. You beware of that pack dog. I'm not trying. I don't, I don't have no names to call. I don't have nobody's name to say, hey, yeah, yeah, they done me like this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some dogs in my life. I've had some pack dogs. I felt like come against me. And this week, God said, yeah, won't you thank me now for getting them out of your life? Amen. Here's what I'm going to tell you. You beware of them packs of dogs, church. Let me give you another do dog. This is a dominant dog. In my mind, it's a bulldog. We've got a big bulldog. His name is Loki. Some of you have met Loki. He, he's, he's 130, 40 pounds. Big old bull mastiff and Ridgeback cross. I mean, he's the man. And it's the Ridgeback part of him, his hair stands up backwards. Used to be so fat now, it's stretched down. <laughs> but let me tell you what Loki is. Loki's the boss. And when Loki comes outside, Dwayne, we've got a, a, a lot of dogs. We've got several. My daughter will pick up any dog. She, I told her, <coughs> you and the dogs will leave. You bring any more dogs home. And I had her gone for a while back. Now we got Kate and more dogs somehow. But, but here, here, I'm just telling you, I'm just speaking. But here's what I'm telling you about old Loki. When he walks out, things change in our yard. He won't look you walk out there. <laughs> Don't. He 
he'll just look, he'll turn around and look back at us, and he thinks, I'll just stroll on out through the dog yard. And guess what? They don't bark at him. I mean, you can let old Fufu, her little mess, run out through there, and they're like, rah, 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 rah. all the other dogs are barking at Fufu, but old Uncle comes out through there, he's walking out there like this. You know why? He's the dominant dog. And here's what I'm telling you, church. You beware of this dominant dog. He's always walking around with his chest down. Or she's walking around, well, he's walking around with his chest down. <laughs> that was not in my notes, I promise. <laughs> Bragging about what they're not. <laughs> Lord. Eddie, I'm going to have to come out of this coat. <laughs> but here, here, here's, what, here's what I'm telling you about this dominant dog. He's always walking around beating his chest, talking about what he's not. Church, you beware of that dominant dog. Amen. Hey, look, let me help you. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. <coughs> oh, I've seen these dogs. They said, look what I did. I've done this. I've done that. Hey, and it's like, to me, I'm thinking, if you don't get out of my face, I don't care what you did. You ain't never did nothing. I mean, I've been around people. They said, I've led 64 people to the Lord this year. You did? How many did you disciple? How many still in church? And he's in there keeping a tally. A tally. I did this, I did it. You ain't did nothing. Amen. He, he, he's a dominant dog. He's walking around like this. Always making, marking their territory. That's what old Lucky does. Lucky, he come out there. His favorite place to cock his legs on my boots on the front porch. <laughs> he's, always, he's always marking his territory. They always have a bad attitude. Y'all got somebody pictured in your mind right now. I know you do. Here, here's what I'm telling you. Paul, Paul said, you beware of that dog. You just beware of it. First Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, let him think that he stand. Take heed lest he fall. What the Bible says. Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world crucified unto me and I unto the world. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. You are nothing. You're absolutely nothing. I'm not trying to break your heart, bust your bubble, but you are absolutely nothing without the blood of Jesus, without the grace of God. We can do nothing without God. We are, will never be nothing. And we'll never have nothing except for what God give us. Amen. It's a dominant dog. There's too many eyes in conversations today. The Bible says this, Proverbs 27, 2. Let another man praise thee and not thine own lips. Amen. A stranger and not thine own lips. The Bible says let somebody else praise you. We don't have to go around saying I, 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 I've got this, I've got that, I've done this, I've done that. Hey, I did this, I went that, I did this. There's too many eyes in conversation. Amen. You beware of the dogs. You be aware of them conversations that start with I. Somebody's walking around hollering about I. No matter how good I've got it, what I've done. You be, you be aware of that dog. I ain't trying to tell you to turn against him. I'm just trying to tell you, you just be aware of it. Paul didn't say you hate these dogs. He said you just be aware of them. You take notice of them. Amen. i got to give you another. This is a discouraging dog. He barks all night. I mean, he'll have every dog in the neighborhood. Now, our dogs know. Now, we, 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 we anyway, dog ain't going to bark too much in my house, do you? Now, we've got hounds. Mark's got hands. Mark, his neighbor says his bark too much. Mine don't say that. <laughs> but if a dog's barking in our house, usually, I say, I say, uh, either something better walk up out there, or they because we get a dog, D, and that thing thinks he's going to bark all night. No, no, no. We have a lot of prayer meetings out there with dogs. <laughs> but here, here, here's what I'm telling you about the discouraging dog. But matter of fact, last night, I was trying to get to bed early. I, I knew I was going to get up early. I couldn't, and I got a dog right here. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. And Jason had to get up. And I walk out there. And I don't need to go outside no more, Bobby. I got that window there. And I push that window down. And I say, dog, if I come out today, I'm going to too big to death by you. And sometimes that's work. But sometimes they won't, they won't test me. So, But I get to listen. You know what I can hear? I can hear another dog way up there on Kennedy Road somewhere that is over here just yapping. Yapping, 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 yapping. You know what? He's a discouraging dog. i got to hurry up. But look here. Now, here, here. Here's what I'm telling you. Most of these discouraging dogs are mixed breeds. They're mixed with the world, trying to mix with the church. It's a mixed breed dog. Most of them are strays that have been just dropped off somewhere. It, it's a discouraging dog. The yeah, Bible says Psalms 59, 14, and at evening, let them return and let them make a noise like a dog. 
going around about the city. You see, they're always making noise. They're always gossiping. They're always yappy, 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 yappy. Uh, they're, and their purpose is to try and steal your joy. You see, how many defeated Christians do you know that are out of church because they've been attacked by a dog? Oh, yeah. And here's what I'm telling you. Satan is pretty good at what he does. Oh, he is. He's real good at what he does. He's not called the great deceiver for nothing. Revelation 12, 9. You'll see what the Bible calls him the great deceiver. He's not given that title for nothing. You see, he's good at what he does. He knows exactly where to plant his troops. He's, he's not inserting his soldiers where you think he's putting them. You see, Satan's not trying to put his soldiers in the nightclubs. He's not inserting soldiers in the strip clubs, in the, in, in the party crowd. In the, in, in, he's not even certain, inserting soldiers into churches where they're dead, dried up, and nothing's going on there. You're not seeing much of that. You know where Satan's trying to put them? Right next to that child of God that's trying to do something for God. That's where he's putting them. He's pretty slick. You know why? He's trying to get your joy. He's trying to plant them just as close to you as he can. To try to steal your joy. You see, if somebody's already a slave to sin, the powers of, of, of Satan don't have to work that hard to keep them down. But as a child of God, this is the devil's favorite people to try and blind. And here's what I'm telling you about these strays. I've got to hurry. Most strays have a real long tongue. How I many of you always walk around tongue and drag? No, you'll see them standing over on the road begging for food. And I, anyway, I've got, got to hurry. Too many stories. James chapter 3. Let me read this for you. You don't have to turn there. Just listen. He said, you beware of these stray dogs, these discouraging dogs. They have long tongues. James chapter 3, verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter of little fire kill it. And the tongue is a fire, a world of, of iniquity. So the tongue among our members that, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is, uh, the, is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and the birds and the serpents and other things of the sea is tamed, but the, but the, but the, but the is tamed and hath been tamed in mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. He said, you know what, we can take lions and tigers and bears and we can work with them enough we can tame them. But somehow or another, we can't tame this thing right here. Amen. He said that it'll set forth the fires of hell. And why is that? Why is it that our little old tongue, he said it's a little member, yet it destroys everything. Yeah. And here's what I'm going to tell you about these stray dogs. Most of them have a real long tongue. <coughs> and I, look, in Colossians 4, 6, and I'm trying to help you. God has helped me. I said there's people I need to ask forgiveness for for the way I've responded to them. And, 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 and the way that I've, I've acted towards them. And how I've let this mouth destroy them. And even this week, I thought, Lord, if you'll show me who they are, I'd be glad to go. I wouldn't be glad to, but I'll have to apologize and say I'm sorry. But here's what Galatians 4, 6 says. It says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. James 1, 1, 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be slow to speak, swift to listen, slow to speak, slow to wrath. This is what the Bible says. Amen. It, it says, If you let us be quick to listen, slow to speak. You come to me, Jerry, you say something, let me listen to what you say. And then let me say, you know what, this is how I want to answer him, because if I say this, I'm going to run him off. But if I answer him like, hey, don't you say that. You shouldn't do that, Jack. He says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You know what? If we'll, we'll watch what our mouth says, we probably won't get as mad as quick. Mark, hallelujah for me. <laughs> anyway, I got to go. You be aware of them discouraging dogs. Let me give you this. Because it's coming. I promise you it's coming. Somebody's going to say something to you. Satan's going to put that discouraging dog in your life to try to steal your joy. Amen. Yeah. And I told Audrey, I've got to tell you, you don't matter. I said, Audrey, I'm preaching on beware of dogs. She said, you're crazy. I said, I know. And then the first of the week she comes in, I've been sitting there, took off work early, trying to study because I knew what my days would look like and where my time was going to be, and I'm trying to get something to preach. And I said, Oh, this is what I'm ready. She said, I 
Can you believe what they said? I mean, look at this. Show me your phone. I said, it's just a dog. That's just a dog. It's just a dog. And here's what I, 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 I told her. I told Mark, I'm telling myself, nobody should ever be able to say anything to steal my joy. That's right. Nobody should ever be able to say nothing about you, nothing against you, to make a difference in your life. That's right. Yeah, you say, oh, you're crazy. Let them start talking. Well, you're going to. Maybe you're not. Somebody's going to. I promise you. <laughs> this is easy preaching, but hard to live by. You don't say nothing about my wife, my kids, my, my, but don't even say nothing about my daughter. We're going to be all right. But the minute you do, boy, I'm going to get back at you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's a discouraged dog. i got to hurry. Then we see there's dumb dogs. <laughs> yeah, the Bible calls them dumb dogs. Here's what a dumb dog is. You say come, that thing will run away. You'll say see it, that thing will stand up. You'll say let's play fetch, you'll throw that thing out there. Guess what you did? You'll wear yourself out and try to retrieve you after a dumb dog. He ain't got enough sense to bring it back. He's a dumb dog. And dogs nowadays are bred for their looks. I mean, some of you, you may have them. I was going to call these dogs out, and I said, you better not to run church member off. But here, here's what I would tell you. We, the, the society we live in, we want to breed these dogs for the looks, Frankie. He ain't good for nothing. Now, we, we, we've got hunt dogs. they got good lungs. They can run at last. We'll get us some pit bull every now and then. We'll hog hunt because the jaws are strong. And that's what it's bred to do. It's bred to catch wild boars, and that's what we keep them for. But, and you say, hold on, like that. Well, I don't care. I've got one or two. But anyway, here, here's what I'm telling you. Here's what everybody wants today. They want that dog that looks good. He got a big chest. I mean, his legs are short. He walks around like this. His tongue's hanging out. I mean, he's just a dumb dog. He ain't good for nothing. That dog couldn't run from here to outside. He messes all over the floor because his mouth's messed up. He, they, they grab the guts out of him. And people's got him. I'm telling you, that dog ain't good for nothing. He got a big head. He got short legs. He got tongues dragging the ground. He got drool running out of his mouth. He, he, he's bred where you can't keep him outside because he'll die. He'll get skin allergies and all that. And when you bring him inside, he's got to have a foo foo bed with feathers and all playing. And you think, look at my dog. I'll tell you what you've got. You've got a dumb dog. He ain't good for nothing. I tell Audrey, I said, if a dog comes around here, bless God, it's going to hunt. Mark knows they better hunt, be pretty good hunt dogs if they're going to make the cut around our house. And I'll tell the old Caitlin, she'll pick up every stray there is. And, and she'll bring it around. I said, Caitlin, that dog ain't good for nothing. And she said, Daddy, but Daddy, look at it. I said, Caitlin, we got one. I said, the only way that dog's staying, is if you get it fixed, or you can't reproduce that mess, and, and, and you get it shots and all this. And so what she, this is back she was in college. And she got her little job there with Glenn and paid to do that. So we still, now she's back home, and that blessed mother's sleeping on our bed. But here, here's what I did. I told all if that dog won't, if a dog won't hunt, it's not staying around our house. It's not. Dog food's high. And we've got a lot of dogs, so if y'all feel generous, you and the dog giving, in the giving, giving spirit, and you love dogs, I will take all the dog food you want to give, okay? I promise you. But I told dogs, if it won't hunt, it won't stay around here. Except for one or two big dogs. We will keep Loki, he's a, he's a 140 pounder, and then Bubba's about 80, because I said, if things go bad, we're going to have something to eat. So we gonna, I said, we could survive off of Loki for a couple of weeks. And then, so here's, here's what I'm telling you about these dumb dogs. i got to hurry. We'll give it to you more minutes. Caitlin, this is the God's own truth. Caitlin brings home this dog a couple of years ago. I don't remember the dog's name. That thing was pretty, though, boy. It had a white, just a solid white husky with eyes blue. His eyes about the color of his shirt. I mean, that dog was pretty. Look like one of them sled dogs on the TV, Bob. And I, she said, Dad, look at this dog. Somebody give it to me. I found it. She probably stole it, but I see my joke. But I, she said, look at this dog. And I thought, well, that thing is kind of pretty. And I thought, well, he'd probably be pretty big. We could, if things get real bad, you know, we'll probably do what we got to do with this too. So we might just keep this dog too. And I got to look at that dog, Jerry. And that blessed dog was cross-eyed as anything I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, that dog, he, I told Kate, I said, we ain't keeping that dog. She said, yes, we are, too. I said, Kate, that dog's cross-eyed. I said, that thing be looking at you, and it's looking out that window. Here too. And I said, I ain't no way I can look at it. I, I could ever trust a dog that I can't look at. I said, that's a dumb dog. And she said, Daddy, do not get rid of my dog. 
God's my witness. She went to the beach. I put that dog on Craigslist. It wasn't about an hour, somebody from Hope Baptist Church called me. And they still got that blessed cross. Kind of come home, she was mad at us. But here's what I'm going to tell you about a dumb dog. You see, the Bible says in Isaiah 56, verse 10, it says uh, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are dumb dogs. This is what the Bible calls them. Dumb dogs. He says they cannot bark. They sleep lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can have no, never have enough. And, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They are all after their own way. Everyone after his own, own game from his quarter. Here's what I'm telling you what the Bible calls a dumb dog. You beware of these dogs. They can't bark. The Bible says they can't bark. That word bark means to warn. Isaiah said the, these dogs, these dumb dogs, that they can't bark. It's preachers that won't preach. I, I, this is what it means. And I was talking to my mama last night. I said, what happened to people preaching on hell? We grew up in the church. She raised us in the church. That's all that preacher preached. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. Frankie, I got saved 415 times because I knew I was going to hell. But I didn't really get saved until, until I got later when the Holy Spirit really convicted me, showed me I was in need of saved. But what happened to that? Now, our preacher still preaches on hell, but what happened to churches that preached on hell? Isaiah called them a bunch of dumb dogs. They can't bark. Oh, you know why they can't? He goes on and tells us. I can't get over this. What happened to sin? What happened to preaching against sin? If I feel like I get mad, I have to apologize because I said something that the Bible said to preach against. What happened to it? He said they're dumb dogs. The Bible says this in Isaiah 58, look 1. It says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions. Amen. Isaiah said, you shout it out. You call sin what it is. Amen. He said, you, you, you tell my people about their transgressions. Amen. That's what we need. Yes. Here's, and in verse 50, chapter 56, he told them, he said, there's a bunch of dumb dogs. He, he, he said they cannot bark. I, told, I read you there, they love to slumber. You know what that is? That means they're lazy. It's lazy preachers. They're dumb dogs. I'm telling you, you better beware of a lazy preacher. I told, I, I, Lord's done some things in my life. I'm pretty, still pretty lazy. i put on a lot of weight since I came here. But I said, I, I'm, I'm worried about that man right there. She said, why? I said, sorry. He's lazy. How's he going to tell his church, you do this, but yet I'm going to sit at home? It ain't going to happen. They love to slumber. Everyone for his own gain. They're looking for a check. They're looking for their own glory. And here's what I'm telling you, church. Pulpits are full of dumb dogs. It's that one that's bred for his looks, for his pedigree, for his, 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 his tongues, his looks, his appearance. And pulpits are full of them. This church may not be perfect. This, this isn't a perfect church. It was real close until you voted me and my family about 15 years ago. And ever since then, it hasn't been perfect. But I'm going to tell you, it's a pretty good one. Amen. We sure don't have no dumb dog. Amen. I'm going to tell you, we've got, well, I thank God for our pastor. I don't know if he's looking or not. I, I don't, but anyway, here's what I'm telling you. I thank God for our pastor. Amen. He leads by example. Amen. He's not about to tell you do this and he'll be the first one to do it. Here's what I'm going to tell you about our pastor. He's not a dumb dog. He'll outwork any man in here. Amen. You can't outwork him. You ain't going to beat him here. You ain't going to stay here longer than him. You, ain't, you know it. Hey, I thank God he's not a dumb dog. He Amen. gives sacrificially. Amen. You say, I don't see that. That's why. Amen. I do. God's used that man to inspire me. I'll just tell you the truth. Whenever I was praying about this building this church in Oklahoma, I said, I said I wasn't going to cry. How are you going to cry and preach about dogs? Anyway, but I said, I said, hey, hey. I said, Steve, why don't you pray about this? Help me pray about this church, man. I don't know. I'm no good for nothing, but I feel like God's leading me to. And then, you know what, you know what Steve done? He come up to me, and I ain't, I'm, I hope he's not watching, but he wouldn't, you wouldn't dare know this. He said, brother, this ain't much money, but I've been praying God showed me where to give this. <laughs> and I've still got that blessed envelope. I'll give that, I'll take money. Every time somebody gives me money, there's some folks in here, I ain't going to call their name. They'll come up, give me a few dollars, and I'll go home, and you know what? I put it in that same envelope where I said, God, thank you. 
Woo! He's going to go out witnessing tomorrow whether you come or not. Look, here's what I'm telling you. He, he, he prays for His people. He cares about you. He still preaches hell's hot and heaven's sweet. <laughs> and when I grow up, I want to be just about like Him. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to trade hunting for golf. But, but I, I, I tell you, I think Lord, if I ever grow up, I wouldn't mind being just like Him. We've got a good one. I'm glad we don't have one of these dumb dogs. And I've been to these churches where preachers won't preach. And I've been to them and I, they won't do this. And there's no wonder the, the members are living the shape they're in. No wonder they're living like that. They're just dumb dogs. i got to go on. i got to hurry. Give me just a few more minutes. You beware of them dumb dogs. Because that breed is getting very popular. They're bringing a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all, I hope you don't have them physical, real, dumb looking things. They ain't good for nothing. They wouldn't even taste good. <laughs> they don't have no lungs. You beware of a dumb dog. You beware of a discouraging dog. You beware of that dumb, dominant dog. But you beware of a sorry dog. And I got to hurry. But then Luke chapter 16, you know the story of Lazarus. It says the rich man Lazarus, the rich man died, being the Abraham's bosom. You know the story. More, it says that the Lazarus laid at the gate. With sore. In chapter 16, verse 8, I believe it says, and more of the dogs came and licked his sores. That's nasty. And I got to looking at this, trying to find different dogs that I could bring up to be aware of, and I got to read this, and I thought, huh, that looks like a picture of sympathy. A lot of people say that's sympathy, where it, uh, poor old Lazarus, he had leprosy, and nobody wanted to come around, but here comes this dog over there, and he licked his sores. And I thought, that bless you, that ain't no sign of sympathy. A dog was the lowest form of life on the earth. And this man, yet this man is laying over here in this kind of shape, and the sorry, no good for nothing dog comes and licks him with his nasty mouth. You say that's sympathy, that ain't sympathy. That's insult to injury. That poor old man's laying over there, and here comes that nasty thing over there just saying, you know what, you ain't good for nothing. And this is the society we live in. We want to kick everybody when they're down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, want, we want to see that man or woman fall and we'll kick them and say, do you see that? you see what they're doing? you believe they've done that again? Oh, yeah. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you are at your spiritual resource, such a one, in the spirit of meekness, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I told him in our service. I thank God for our pastor. But I thank God for hope for humanity. <coughs> Y'all know what that is? They feed the homeless. They go out on the weekends and they, they give that. And sometimes you think, yeah, well, we ain't making much of a difference. I thank God for you. Amen. You ain't a sorry dog. I thank God if we support our church supports drug addiction programs. Amen. You say, oh, I don't care. I don't really like that. I don't care if you like it or not. I thank God we do. Amen. He said, consider yourself. It ain't nothing but the grace of God. I ain't in one. Look, thank God for our food pantry. You say, oh, I ain't much. It's a little food pantry. How do you know? You ever brought anything to it? You ever came here and gave out food? You ever tried to miss those families that don't have food? You see, all that family is just taking, taking care of they're, they're taking advantage of our food pantry. You're just a sorry dog. I, I wouldn't call you the sorry dog because I was looking at you. <laughs> I thank God for the bus ministry. Me and Audrey was standing out there Monday uh, holding up our sign on Main Street. Here come this girl up there. And I was, I was like a kid in the candy store. You know why? Because young bless God brought her to church her whole life on the bus. And I said, girl, what you been doing? She said, oh, we going to church. You got a boyfriend. Now, where's your boyfriend? Let me meet her. She was still, she lied to us. She said she's coming today. She's scared I was going to whip her boyfriend. But here, here, I thank God for the bus ministry. I thank God for visitation. Here's what I'm going to tell you. i got to go home. You beware of that sorry dog. <coughs> you just beware of it. This is what Paul said. Because what we'll do, we'll get focused on that sorry, no good for nothing. We'll start losing our joy. i got to go. Revelation chapter 22, we'll find there's a lost dog. It, the Bible says this. He, 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 he's, it says, Blessed are they that do His commandments. They may have a uh, right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. For without are dogs 
and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. Here's what, here's what the Bible says. You know who's not going to heaven? Who's going to die and go to hell? The Bible calls them dogs. Church, you beware of them lost dogs. We need to beware. We need to be, we need to be looking out for those lost dogs. And you know what we did? We, you know, here's what I'm telling you about a lost dog. It's usually a stray that somebody's dropped off that nobody wants. He don't have no identification on him. He don't have nobody that cares, that nobody loves. And church, we need to be on, beware of those. You know why? We need to be on the lookout and saying, you know what? We need to get that dog to the shelter. Sometimes me and Kate will go over to that shelter. That, I may have told you this. I don't know if we did or not. But Kate, I say, let's go, let's go to the shelter. Okay, Dad, let's go. Or she asked me, Dad, we're going to the shelter. You know what we'll do? We'll go over there and just walk around. You can take them old mutts and you can take them outside. That one over in Greensboro now has got a, uh, uh, man, this thing is state of the art. They got artificial turf to use bathroom on. <laughs> but we'll go over there. And, and, and here's what I'm going to tell you. You know what it is now? It's a no-kill. A lot of them are no-kill shelters. And church, this is what we need to be. We need to get that lost dog to the shelter Amen. where nobody will kill him, but his life will be saved. We need to be, be aware, be able to look at. And here's what I'm going to tell you about all these dogs, and i got to go. He didn't say you can't be dog friendly. He, don't, he didn't say not to be a dog lover. He just said you beware of these dogs. And here's what I'm trying to tell you, because Satan will use these dogs all to try to steal what God is doing in your life. Amen. Oh, yeah. And so don't you dare think, and don't start trying to say, hey, she smart mouth me, she's a dog. No, not necessarily. <laughs> because I've got people I need to apologize to for the way I've let this whole long tongue destroy lives. But here's what I'm going to tell you about this. We need to get us some guard dogs. One reference in the Bible, when Job, he says, I get my dog luck over my flock. Or let's compare to that. He's saying you're not worthy to lay with my guard dog. In church, we need to be a guard dog. I mean, somebody needs to stand up and say, you know what, it's not happening. Monday night, we was, we went on visit, we was on holding our sign in our spot there where me and Audrey get to go. And I don't keep saying that to brag. I praise the Lord because God showed me something through this. But Monday, Monday evening, we're standing there and Al was feeling bad. And so Marty was standing over there and Steve went and stood with, with, with uh, Marty. And I told Audrey, I said, I wish Steve wouldn't stand there. She said, well, I said, I just wish he, 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 would, he would go stand down the road somewhere. Back where he was at. She says, why? I said, Audrey, if somebody come behind and touch that man or said something to him in front of me, I don't think I could take it. Amen. I said, that's probably one man I'd probably spend the rest of my life in prison over. I don't think I could take it. And here's what I'm telling you. We need to be a guard dog. Bless God, that's my pastor. Amen. Don't you say nothing bad about him. Wow. If you can't love him, get in get out. <laughs> we need some guard dogs. We need somebody that's going to stand up and say, you know what, I'm going to protect the flock. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. <laughs> protect your joy. Hey, look, if, if, if you're standing to your feet, I've got to go. I've got to marry these people for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> if you find them that your joy is scarce, not that you play something. I mean, you say, you know what, I've been here to put slip too long. I mean, this certain circumstance has come into my life and I, I don't know where my joy is at. And, and see, here, here, here's what I even thought about visitation. When it's not fun for you, something's got your joy. I mean, whenever you, you think this is, this is, that it's not fun to do this, and I've been the worst one to complain about it. I mean, it's not fun to go to church. It's not fun to, 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 to be part of this and be around the brethren. Something's happened to your joy. You see, it becomes a burden then. And here, here's, here's what I'm trying to tell you. I believe the Holy Spirit is showing you right now. He showed me. It all came through one of them dogs. There was a dog somewhere. <coughs> or somebody that's been approached by them right in us. It's making that influence. So here's what I'm going to tell you, church. And I've done John 15, 11. These things have I spoken unto you. My joy might remain in you. And this joy that we have, God give it to us. It's a byproduct of the Spirit. He said the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. You see, we 
we accept Jesus Christ, He gives us that. And you need to guard that. So church, I'm going to give an altar call. I have to. And I need to. If you're lost, you need to get saved. You need to get to the shelter. They'll never kill you. They'll feed you. But look, if you're here, you don't have to come to this altar. I don't, I, if you want to, I'd love to pray with you. If, you, if you, you're that hurt, you want to pray. But I want you to just say, God, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Lord, help me. I want my smile. I want my uplift. I want the upbeat. I want, I want to be fun like it used to be. Thank you for it. And God, you give me this joy. Church, I'm going to pray. Well, Donnette, Donnette, Donnette's playing. I'm going to pray. I just want to ask God to help us. Help us to guard the flock. Help us to beware of those dogs. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I thank you for your sweet spirit that's here. And Lord, I do. I thank you for our pastor, his family. Thank you for allowing us, bringing my family to this little old church. Thank you. Lord, thank you for our church. The spirit of the, the unity and the giving and the love and compassion that, 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 that you've raised up here. And Lord, just thank you for it. God, I thank you for being so faithful. Lord, Lord, for protecting us, protecting this church, exposing those dogs. And Lord, you just, uh, Lord, I pray continue to use this church for your cause and for your glory. But God, I pray for that one that's here now that's discouraged. Lord, you light the flames of, of, of revival in their life. And Lord, restore to them that joy. God, we love you. Thank you. Pray you have your way tonight. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, church. Love you.